in so many ways, geodiversity is impacting our lives. And it's been really exciting to see the area that I've worked in for some years get onto the international stage. It's gonna help policymakers respond better to the challenges of tomorrow. I'm an honorary associate at the Oxford University Museum of Natural History. I'm interested in geodiversity, which is the variety of the non-living elements of nature. It's everything from rocks, minerals, soils and fossils, to landscapes, rivers. Really, it's the forgotten half of nature. The policy problem we recognised was not enough people in the general public and not enough policy makers are aware of the important role that geodiversity plays in all of our lives. Every ecosystem in the world is underpinned by some form of geodiversity, be that rocky cliffs that provide nesting grounds for birds or the soils that help grow the food that we buy in the shops to eat. It provides us with the resources that we need to build the green future of tomorrow, like the copper for wind turbines. And by better understanding and harnessing geodiversity, we can have a more sustainable future. So the best way to do that was to try and establish an International Geodiversity Day so that for one day a year, the focus would be on this really important policy area. So the policy partner for us is UNESCO, which is the Education, Science and Cultural Organisation of the UN. It may seem a large organisation, but we're just a small group of people. Our strength comes from the experts that we're working with. With Jack, we have a somebody who speaks with the with authority in, in his field but who manages to make it understandable to a wider public as well. So we worked with geological organizations at regional, national and international level to get letters of support to show policymakers that this was something of real significance and then from there you go through a quite long process of various meetings within UNESCO to get the final vote in the UNESCO General Conference that this is going to be an official UNESCO event every year on October the 6th. The biggest challenge for policy engagement with the sciences is lack of funding. But the great thing about this project is we had full-time funding from the Oxford Policy Engagement Network so that I could work 100% of the time on this project. I think the main thing that we've learned is that you need strong relationships. We were particularly uh, reliant and grateful to the support we got from the national representatives from the UK, Poland and Portugal. And this probably wouldn't have happened without their help and support. So policy engagement for me is about establishing those relationships so that when the door opens, you already have the connections that you need to create the impact that you want.